Hello, ethical hackers and security enthusiasts. Welcome back to Hacker Shield. Today, we're venturing into the realm of Snapchat security. We're going to delve into the various techniques that are used to test the robustness of a Snapchat account. It's a fascinating journey that will reveal how the digital fortresses of today are probed for weaknesses. But before we dive in, a word of caution. The methods we discuss are meant for ethical hacking, penetration testing, and bug bounty programs. They're not tools for mischief, but instruments for improving security. Always ensure you have explicit permission and adhere to all legal and ethical guidelines before applying these methods. This is not a guide for illicit activities, but a roadmap for those who wish to test and bolster their digital defenses. So, with that important note, let's roll up our sleeves and dive into the world of Snapchat security. Let's get started. One of the most common methods used to gain unauthorized access to an account is through phishing. This technique is as cunning as it sounds. It involves creating an exact replica of the Snapchat login page, a doppelganger designed to trick unsuspecting users into entering their login details. The moment they hit the login button, their credentials are sent straight to the attacker. It's like casting a baited hook into a river, waiting for a fish to bite. The fish in this case, are the unsuspecting users who fall for the bait and enter their details into the fake login page. But remember, this method is akin to identity theft and is highly illegal without explicit permission. Therefore, it should only be used in a controlled environment for ethical hacking, penetration testing, and bug bounty programs. However, this method is illegal without explicit permission and should only be used in a controlled environment with authorization. Keylogging involves using a piece of software to record keystrokes made by the user, potentially capturing their login credentials. This is a stealthy method that operates in the background, silently recording every key pressed. When applied to hacking a Snapchat account, if a user were to type their login details, the keylogger would record these keystrokes, giving the hacker access to the username and password. Now imagine this. A user downloads what they believe to be a harmless app or file, but unbeknownst to them, it contains a hidden keylogger. Once installed, it begins its work, capturing every keystroke, including those precious Snapchat login details. But remember, deploying a keylogger without consent is not only unethical, it's illegal. This method is shared not to encourage malicious activities, but to emphasize the importance of secure practices. Always be cautious of what you download and from where. Again, this method should only be used with explicit permission and within legal boundaries. Social engineering involves manipulating people into divulging sensitive information or performing actions that may compromise their security. This is a psychological warfare of sorts, where the hacker doesn't rely on coding prowess but instead uses human interaction and deception to break the walls of security. Imagine this. Someone posing as a Snapchat support staff member contacts a user, claiming there's an issue with their account. They ask the user to confirm their login details for verification purposes. Once the user complies, the hacker gains access to the account. That's a textbook example of social engineering. However, it's not just about impersonation. It can also involve exploiting trust, taking advantage of someone's willingness to help, or even using intimidation tactics. But remember, as powerful as social engineering can be, it has its place strictly in ethical hacking, penetration testing, and enhancing security measures. Social engineering can be a powerful tool, but it should only be used with explicit permission and within legal boundaries. If you discover a vulnerability in Snapchat's system, you could potentially exploit it to gain access to an account. Exploiting vulnerabilities often involves uncovering a flaw or weakness in the system's design or code and using it to your advantage. For instance, you might find a way to bypass Snapchat's authentication process, inject malicious code into the system, or exploit a design flaw to gain unauthorized access. This method requires a deep understanding of systems and coding, and it's not for the faint-hearted. It's like a high-stakes game of hide-and-seek, where you're constantly searching for hidden weaknesses while avoiding detection. Remember though, this is a double-edged sword. While it can be used to test the security of a system, it can also cause significant harm if used maliciously. However, exploiting vulnerabilities without permission is illegal, and you should always report any vulnerabilities you find to the appropriate parties. If you have access to the email account associated with the Snapchat account, you can use the password reset feature to gain access. This is a common method employed when the email account is known and accessible. 
Once you initiate the password reset, Snapchat sends a link to the registered email address. Clicking on this link allows you to create a new password and effectively take over the account. But there's a catch. The account holder is notified about the password change. If they react quickly, your access could be short-lived. There's another layer of security that Snapchat offers. Two-factor authentication. If this is enabled, even having access to the registered email won't be enough. A unique verification code, sent to the account holder's phone, is required to reset the password. In conclusion, there are several methods that could potentially be used to test the security of a Snapchat account, assuming you have explicit permission and are acting within legal and ethical boundaries.